if you start living authentically through the content that you produce and you really understand who you are and what you're here to do, your purpose and your vision and mission, well, then when you create content, it's so much more resonant. It's so much more captivating and engaging and people want to watch that. But if you're creating content around something superficial, you're going to notice the engagement goes down. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast, an auditory journey through the latest in marketing, branding, and advertising. Now, here's your Marketing Expedition Guide, Ray Allen. On this very fascinating episode of the Marketing Expedition Podcast, I get to speak with Armando LaDuke, and he is a dynamic and emerging powerhouse in the entertainment world and has been captivating audiences with his remarkable performances in both Hollywood films and television shows. His innate talent and magnetic screen presence have not only guaranteed admiration and acclaim for viewers, but have also led to numerous accolades and achievements within the film industry. And versatility is a hallmark of Armando's acting career as he effortlessly transitions between adrenaline-fueled thrillers, poignant dramas, and even lighthearted comedies. Every character he portrays is imbued with authenticity and depth, regardless of the size of his role. His dedication to his craft has earned him critical acclaim, as well as prestigious awards and nominations that underscore his impact on the entertainment landscape. But beyond acting, Armando has proven his entrepreneurial prowess by establishing a production company celebrated for its inventive and original content. His keen eye for compelling stories and unique perspectives has led to numerous successful projects, further solidifying his status as a creative force in the industry. In addition to him working in film and television, he's also appeared in several stage productions, showcasing his range and versatility as the performer. And his theater background has undoubtedly contributed to the richness and nuances that he brings to his on-screen roles. And despite his demanding schedule, Armando remains deeply connected to his New Orleans roots, proudly representing the city's distinctive culture and heritage. As a committed ambassador, he actively participates in local events and fundraisers, leveraging his influence to support the community in various ways. And in essence, Armando is a multifaceted, driven artist who has carved a niche for himself in the entertainment sector through determination, hard work, and his innate gift for storytelling. With a growing list of achievements and steadfast commitments to his craft, Armando continuously strives for excellence, leaving audiences eagerly anticipating his next creative endeavor. And you're gonna learn about what he's going to do next with his agency. So stay tuned for that. But first, it's time for your marketing essentials moment, the basics that you need to help you continue to build your brand and your bottom line. We are going over marketing terms that you need to know so that you can speak the geek speak that we speak. So last time we covered things like B2B marketing, B2C marketing, inbound and outbound marketing. And this week I want to continue using terms that you need to know. And of course, digital marketing, obviously it's all about digital, but what does it incorporate and what kind of things does digital marketing encompass? So digital marketing is the use of all the online channels to reach and convert customers. And so common channels really include, of course, search engines and pay-per-click ads, social media platforms, and all the ads that you can do on each of those platforms, like LinkedIn and TikTok and Twitter and, or sorry, Twitter, formerly known as Twitter X now, email, all the different types of things that you can do from a digital perspective or online marketing. And it is a wonderful way to track your audience and understand the behaviors of your audience and the things that they're doing, what they're clicking on, when they're clicking, who is clicking, all of those types of things. And you can use both paid and organic in tandem to create that digital marketing strategy that you're after. So peso, paid, earned, searched, and organic. And then you can mix that into your entire strategy, uh, whole all the different ways to reach, whether it is B2C or B2B, 
or if you are wanting to do something very specific for a nonprofit, for example, in building awareness, any of those types of things. So all the digital marketing and things that you can think of in those digital channels that you can use that's going to best suit your objectives. I don't want you to do all things on all channels because you cannot be all things to all people but you can select the channels that are going to reach your target audience the best. And so some of that might require you doing some research into your target audience and understanding what it is that they use and how they're reached and how they're influenced and what kind of omni-channel presence do you need and how are you going to reach them in the most effective, impactful ways. Other terms is search engine marketing or SEM, and then also search results pages or SERPs. So search engine results pages, SERPs otherwise known as, and it's also utilizing pay-per-click or PPC to create these results that we're after. So when you want to do search engine marketing, that makes your using these to increase your site's visibility in the search page results or SERPs. And so, yeah, those are some things that you can do to drive traffic, drive your specific audience to your website or maybe a specific landing page. And you can use these in both B2C and B2B in order to get them to where you want them in your marketing funnel, which is another term that you need to understand. And lots of different, you know, theories out there and how you want to think about your funnel and how you're preparing it and putting it together. But basically the top of the funnel, so think of like a, you're going to put oil in your car and you've got a funnel, right? And and the opening is much wider at the top and then it funnels down. And so that top of your funnel is generally considered the awareness stage. And then they're going to move into consideration and then conversion and then loyalty or other people have other means and words that they say in the funnel where they continuously go through this process where they engage, they attract, they delight, and then serve. And then of course, on the flip side, you want to retain them too. So there's a whole nother process of retaining the clients that you have or customers that you have received. So the marketing funnel. So yeah, in that initial awareness stage from the all the way down to the moment that they buy and then become loyal fans and then tell other people about you, all those types of things. So anyway, there's lots of different terminology that we use. So when we're thinking about paid pay-per-click platforms, including search engines and social media sites. Of course, the most popular being Google ads. A lot of people use Google ads to drive traffic and help with SERPs, which is again, the search results page, uh, otherwise known as search or SERPs. (laughs) And so really you can use lots of different tools to get people there to going to your website to then get past awareness into consideration and conversion and how you are thinking about each strategy and each step of the way of how you're going to attract and retain those people that you want to be your soulmate customers. And then thinking about how you can tweak things along the way or what to stop, start and keep or tweak doing and how you're going to also think about the search words and the key phrases that you're using on your website. So that way, when the search engine results, when they're serving up your page, you are doing yourself a service by being able to have those keywords and phrases in alt tags and other ways on your site to be able to then allow people to search for them. So thinking through that whole process and how you're going to go through the funnel and how you're going to keep attracting them and then getting them to your site and all the different parts and pieces. So Utilizing some advertising research, whether that's through paid platforms that we use or even some free resources that you can use to research and give you insights into your specific audience that you're wanting to target. You can also do some competitive research and what are your competitors doing? What kind of key phrases are they using and how can you track the keyword rankings and how you're performing versus your competitor? And you can do some competitive analysis. There's some tools called SEMrush, AA, what's it called? AARFs that you can use. Lots of different tools that are out there, of course, that can help you monitor 
what those keywords need to be, auditing your local listings, of course, that performing that competitor analysis, looking at their social media accounts, looking at their websites, what can you do better and how can you do it better? (laughs) And then combining that organic and paid search engine results to continuously build your short and long-term pipeline for the types of leads that you would like to generate or types of clientele that you want on your site buying from you, or even if it's a, a you know brick and mortar store, how are you going to track that foot traffic into your store? Or if it's your, if you're a click and mortar and you want to attract people online to buy from you. So those are some terminology that you could use so that you can use search engine marketing and inbound, outbound, all of these things to your advantage. Another terminology that we use somewhat interchangeably, it's content marketing. And it's really the practice of creating and distributing content to grow and engage and maintain your audience, but also allowing you to be the thought leader in your industry. But it also gives lots of good search tools and search keywords, phrases, and things like that. If you're posting on blogs, or if you've got newsletters uh, on your social media posts, if you do white papers or eBooks for download, where you can get them to download in exchange for their email address, um, lots of different types of content marketing campaigns that you can do. And of course, across the board, how you can make the different types of content that you can create to help capture your audience's attention and then eventually conversion. So lots of different types of content marketing here. You can do a quiz or a test and make it interactive. You can have, of course, short videos or do a live event, host an online conference or a webinar. Of course, podcasts like this. You can do PDF for downloads where it's like a a manual or a white paper. Maybe you want to do a product comparison and show the difference between you and your competitors and what makes you different so that you're doing some differentiation, but you're also listing your competitors on your website. So then when people uh, search for the competitors, then chances are that maybe you'll come up too if you optimize for that. And then of course you can do things like an ebook or a tutorial or some sort of template that they can download, maybe some checklists, other types of content that can be useful to your audience that when they need it, they can get it from you. Um, You can also do things like having, you know, a news section on your website. You can do interviews, again, kind of videos and or text. You can do some research that you want to share that would be helpful to your audience. Maybe there's a study that has been done or a case study, some feedback. Um, Maybe there's an educational article that you can write that would be more educational versus selling. Maybe you can put some subtle selling plugs in there, but it's not all about selling. (laughs) Some other visual content that you can use are infographics or some slide presentations or some carousels that go into social media that have educational content and information. Again, presenting yourself as the thought leader and then utilizing a variety of those different types of tools that can help that content that you want to deliver to your target audience so that you are seen as useful and providing value and not just trying to constantly sell, sell, sell to them, but it can also drive brand awareness and help you with your ranking for all of those informational keywords and keyword phrases that you want to do, especially when they're early on in the funnel process of just building awareness. uh, And then of course, leading them into consideration by you being able to give them more information that they're wanting and then addressing any of their objections that they might have in order to get them to the bottom of that funnel that we were talking about into converting and buying from you (laughs) and then becoming loyal customers that tell everybody else about you because they become the shareholders, right? They can share the story. They have the power to share that story of how that experience was when they bought from you. So yeah, there's lots of different types of good content examples that you can search and seek and get ideas from or inspiration from. We have lots of different good content and blog posts all about content marketing inside the Marketing Expedition community. Uh, If you are a member of that or haven't become a member yet, but want to go to themarketingexpedition.com and you can seek out all the different articles that we have about search engine optimization and content marketing and inbound and outbound and all the different tools and technologies and social media marketing, all the things that you need in order to help you continue to build that brand in the bottom line. 
All right. So we're going to talk more social media and marketing and just all the, the jargon that we use in our world so that you can feel pretty educated when you are talking to maybe an agency or another marketer. I want you to be well-versed in the vocabulary that we use every day. All right. So let's get into the interview and then tune in next time and you'll get more marketing jargon, more than you'll ever need, but I hope that you have found this to be beneficial. And of course, anytime you want more information, go to the marketingexpedition.com and we'll see you there. Let's listen to the interview. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition podcast. I'm your host, Ray Allen. I'm the president and CEO of Pepper Shock Media and the founder of the Marketing Expedition community. And of course, this podcast and this guest today, we have Armando LaDuc. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Armando. <laughs> What's up? How are you? Good to be on. Doing well. Doing well. It's peak allergy season, so bear with me. <laughs> no worries. I hear you. I have the same so, problem. Armando, I would love to have you start off with just sharing a little bit of how you got to where you are now, give us a brief history into the past and then what you're working on now today and into the future. Go for it. Cool. So I started off um, entrepreneurship pretty early. I was always thinking about how to how to start a business. And then I got into um, acting and that really just changed the trajectory of my life. And I was starting to do theater. And then I moved to New Orleans to do television and film and was fortunate to act in, you know, over 60 television and film projects and work with some amazing directors and uh, was just kind of paying attention on set and just seeing what cinematographers were doing and what the directors were doing. And so I was just super curious about how it worked. And I started getting behind the camera and started creating content that was more fun and funny and sketch comedy. And I, I joined an improv group. And so we started doing that and um, made a movie and then, to, you know, and produced a, a few independent films. And I rebranded to LaDuke Entertainment in 2016 to do more corporate work because I felt like, why couldn't I bring the story aspect to, you know, commercials and business? And then, um, took another turn around four years ago where I started getting more into the content marketing game for social media and like just volume of content where we create clips for um, social media for our clients. And now that's a thing, right? Uh, right? Before it wasn't necessarily a thing. And so now a, a lot of people are, are, are on that bandwagon. And then I took another turn about three weeks ago where um, where once again, I was just sort of confronted with, um, who I am and, and where I'm going and, and how things are, 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 are happening. And so I'm rebranding again. Well, it, it always takes us a, a lifetime to figure out what we want to do when we grow up, right? It, it really does. Really does. <laughs> Love it. And so now we're the LaDuke agency, uh, and we're, we're focused more on personal branding mm -hmm. and what that means for businesses in terms of, you know, building a personal brand, because when, Ray Allen is never going to change, but, uh, but the things you work on might. And so if we work on you as a personal brand, then everything you touch has that branding already associated with it. And so that's kind of where we are, are now and where we're heading and, and how I think we're going to continue moving into, uh, cause it, it incorporates everything that we do from podcasting to social media clips to customer journey videos and all of that good stuff. And we have it now packaged really nicely. Fun. And do you primarily do a lot of work there in the new Orleans or do you go all over the, the country? We have clients all over the country. So we Detroit to Miami, New York, uh, San Francisco. So we have, yeah, we have clients all over the country. Do you want to share maybe a success story with one of your clients? You you can choose to name names if you sure. like, but maybe just kind of walk me through what or some of the things that you've worked with in and what helped them transition from where they were to where they are now. So I'll I'll say one of my clients, our our lang our longest standing client, his name is Louis Scott from Atlanta, ran a forty million dollar personal injury firm started a company called Eight Figure Firm where he became a consultant to attorneys on how to grow their law firm businesses. And we helped him grow from 
you know, startup to, to over, I think he might be at six or 7 million at this point within a three year period. <clears throat> and what we really helped him do was, you know, through the content creation process is find his voice. Mm -hmm. And so as you become more confident in who you are and, and as you become more clear about what it is that you do and, and how you help and who you offer, videos become extremely powerful and how you, the, the messaging is also super important and then the consistency and volume. And he is up to, I think, five to seven posts a day, video content on all of his social media platforms. And, and that's been his, and he'll tell you that's one of the biggest things that, um, that he can attribute his success to today is, you know, is, is really creating that personal brand. And so when we saw him do that, we saw, I started doing it for myself and man, I grew, I grew also, um, not to five, six, uh, million yet, but yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> I love those success stories because I, I can in instantly see the smile on your face and like just how proud you are of what you've accomplished with your team and, and your client. So maybe tell me just like a specific tactic that that really you think pivoted, like what was a defining moment? I mean, he creates content, a lot of content, but like what are some things that he did in that content that seemed to be what elevated him? Um, I think that his content, when he, when we first started out, it was very, it was very awkward <laughs> and it was, you know, th the way he creates content these days is a lot more authentic, a lot more irreverent. And when you first start doing content, you're really just super concerned with what people are going to think and how people are going to judge you and what should I put this video out and should I not? And mm. when you get to the point where you don't care and you can really live your authentic self. And I think that that's what we really help with from my acting background yeah. is, is, is really honing in on that imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and helping you overcome that. There was a book called irreverent acting and Eric Morris talks about that in the book. It's like when you become irreverent, when you become just in the mode and, and, and you're acting and you're in flow, you're no longer thinking about judgment. You're no longer thinking about how you look. You're no longer thinking about all of those things that pull you out of the performance. And so I said, why can't we bring that into social media as well? Because when you're in flow mm -hmm. and you know what you're doing and you're just comfortable you're no longer thinking about it, but it takes time. It's not one of those things that I can't hope and wish for you and you can't read your way out of mm -hmm. the work. You mm -hmm. have to do the work. You have to like put yourself out there and through the process of creation, that's where you get the irreverence. That's where you get the confidence. I think a lot of people can really relate to what you're saying because when people first start oh, I don't know if anyone's going to want to watch it. I don't know if this is yeah. going to be worthy or anything. And really the idea is you just got to start doing it and see what yeah. works and what doesn't. And the nice thing is you can always delete it if it's that bad, right? True. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd i say, you know, if there's, if you're, we have a seven day challenge that I that I do with um, with people that, that come to my webinar. And basically day one is you want to figure out what it is that you are that lights you up, right? And we create a speaker one sheet for them so that they can figure out, okay, what is that one thing I really, really want to talk about? Not necessarily tactics, not what you do, but why you do the things that you do, right? And those are the driving forces. Usually it's, usually it's associated with, unfortunately, some sort of traumatic experience or something that you went through and you overcame it. Mm -hmm. And as you overcame that trauma, as you overcame those obstacles, it made you who you are. And those scars create that uniqueness, right? And they create that voice and the thing that really you want to talk about, but people don't necessarily want to talk about that thing. They, they want to talk about, oh, the business and the business and the business, but they don't necessarily want to talk about the why they're doing the business because they won't, maybe they're afraid that they're going to alienate some people. Maybe they don't feel comfortable putting themselves out there that way. But if you realize that 
if you start living authentically through the content that you produce and you really understand who you are and what you're here to do, your purpose and your vision and mission, well, then when you create content, it's so much more resonant. It's so much more captivating and engaging and people want to watch that. But if you're creating content around something superficial, you're going to notice the engagement goes down. Um, you're going to notice that you don't, it's not lighting you up either. I can, if we can get down to it, to the bottom and really figure out what makes you tick and what lights you up, when you start talking about it, your voice changes. You start getting animated. Like immediately I'm starting to get animated because yeah. I'm super passionate about it. So yeah. as I, you know, as I talk about these things and overcoming imposter syndrome and really like creating that personal brand, not just so that you can make money, but so that you can go and impact the world. I, I tell this story on how powerful one video can be because it, it, it helped my relationship with my wife. So Brene Brown was on a podcast and she was talking about before she goes home, her and her husband have a conversation on the phone and they talk about where they are on a scale of one to 10, one being, right. you know, super low or 10 being super amazing. And if he's having a bad day, but she's having an amazing day, well, then she knows she's going to have to do the heavy lifting or vice versa. Or if they're both having a good day, great, then they know what to expect. Or if they're both having a bad day, then they know that they have to give each other grace. And so that one video changed the course of my life. It changed how I also interact with other people because I can go, you know, I wonder where they're at on a scale of one to 10. You know, maybe they're not at a 10 today, so I should probably provide a little bit of grace or maybe I can ask them where they're at. And then that way I, I'm i further informed as to how I treat people. And so that's how when when you think about creating content on those terms, you start thinking about how impactful these videos can be. And if they're living on for 20, 30, 40 years then the, the impact isn't just here and now. The impact is going to be felt for hundreds, thousands of years, you know? I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's unbelievable when you think about that impact and the ripple effect. Absolutely. And video is very powerful. And oftentimes people will watch a video and read the subtitles before they'll read, you know, the entire text on a, a web page. So yes, I agree that video can be very moving and, and having that story. And you're kind of alluding to the hero's journey, right? When people have some sort of traumatic experience or something that they've had to overcome and then they do and they share that story. It, the idea is not because it's them feeling out of place or uncomfortable with it. It's because then now they can leverage that and have other people learn from them and be inspired by them and motivated by them. And I definitely can relate to that too, because for a long time, I wouldn't share my, you know, my origin story or anything like that, because I felt like ashamed or embarrassed or, you know, in, in, in then once you start to, to kind of unpack that and share it out there a little bit more, a little bit more, you realize it's not, it's not about you. It's about the people that you're impacting. And I love that so much for you yeah. and what you're doing for people to be able to cross that bridge because it's very, it's very, it's like a Scary. weight lifted off your shoulders yeah. to then be like, you know what, this is who I am and how I got here. And you know what, some of those experiences were not even by choice and it is who I am and what made me today. And so I think that what you said is, is very, very relatable to people who are maybe thinking about wanting to share a story, maybe thinking about wanting to start a podcast or doing yeah. a video, but just, just haven't cross that bridge to get there yet. And I love yeah. that you're helping people because mindset is everything, right, Armando? It, it really is. When you think about what, like everything can change in a second and, and, and it really is depending on, on your, your belief in yourself. And look, I'll, I'll get woo for a second. You know, I don't know, you know, what people's beliefs are. And, um, I certainly don't try to force my beliefs on anyone, whether you're Christian or, or, or Muslim or spiritual, but I do believe that there is energy out there that is external and that you can pull from that energy. Um, and you know, if you can slow down and if you can tap into that energy, that, that, that the courage and you know, the, the answers are there for you. If you can just slow down and, 
um, look at the signs and, and pay attention and, and ask for guidance, you know, and when you ask for that guidance and when you tap into the infinite, and like I said, whatever you, it is that you choose to believe, you know, that, that can really help you on this journey to, 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 to get the courage enough to go, you know what, I am going to make that decision to start creating content because it's calling me to, to, to do something greater than, than what my ego or pride wants. Right. Right. Well, even if you believe in yourself, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's right. That's that's first step for sure. And now it's time for a message from one of our partners, Kitcaster. Did you know that podcasts are a great way to grow your personal and business brand? And Kitcaster is a podcast booking agency that specializes in developing real human connections through podcast appearances. We've had several guests from Kitcaster on the Marketing Expedition podcast as well. So if you're an expert in your field, have a unique story to share, or an interesting point of view, it's time to explore the world of podcasting with Kitcaster. You can expect a completely customized concierge service from their staff of communication experts. Kitcaster is your secret weapon in podcasting for business. Your audience is waiting to hear from you. Go to kitcaster.com slash expedition to apply for a special offer for friends of this podcast. So Armando, tell me more. You you are pivoting to doing personal branding and you know the the content creation that people need. What's your ideal client right now? Who is it that you're wanting to help serve most? I'm looking to help visionaries right now. I think when you hear the term visionary, it becomes like something grand. And there's people out there that have not played in the organizations and systems um, that society has built right now uh, because they're just a little different, right? They think a little different. They think on more <laughs> of a grand scale. And there's nothing wrong with you, right? I used to have shame um, in how I thought and, and why I was so driven and then I realized that, uh, uh, that I'm not alone, right? I, there's people out there that also are visionaries. I think we're gonna um, call that we're gonna call that vision shame. Vision shame. There you go. There, there we go. That's our new term because there I there you can go. Really relate to that because yeah. people do like they if they don't have visionary in them and they see other visionaries, they think they're like crazy whack. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. It's true. What is happening, right? Yeah, yeah. it's really no more true. Vision shame. <laughs> no more vision shaming. And so those are the people that, um, you know, that that have that voice inside them, you know, that have put a lid on themselves for the longest time and people that uh, haven't people that are out there writing books and, you know, and being thought leaders. Those are definitely people that we work with. Um, but, you know, also those people that are sort of visionaries and hiding, Mm. Um, those are people that I'd love to work with because I think that we can show them that it's okay. There's a book called Driven mm -hmm. by Dr. Brackman. It's Driven. It's called Driven. Yep. Mm -hmm. But basically the book is about like the, the, the visionaries and like the D2, D4 gene that we all have that drives us. And it was such a validating book for me because then I really realized, hey, I'm a visionary. Like, no wonder, right? And stop putting a lid on Armando and I'm going to start living more authentically and I'm not going to live apologetically because I did for the longest time because of how I grew up. Armando was always at fault. Armando was bad in school. Armando's always a bad kid. Armando's not listening in class. Armando's the class clown, Arm you know? And so <laughs> when you grow up listening to that over and over and over again, that you were stupid and that you were an idiot and that you were going nowhere. And even my teachers would tell me I was going nowhere. And you start to believe it. And then you 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 find out that there's other people like you out there. I mean, it was just like, uh, you know, I cried when I read the book because I was like, man, I finally feel validated. Like, I finally feel like there's nothing wrong with me. And so if you're out there and you're listening and you, you know, you have ideas and, 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 and you're, you go a thousand miles an hour and you're super driven and you're motivated, but, and you have all of these ideas, there's, there's a place for you. Um, and, and we can absolutely help, uh, watch content that, that, that I create, you know, cause it's all about that. It's all about overcoming that imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Doug Brackman. Okay. There Doug you go. Doug Brackman. That's it. That's yeah. Yeah. Driven by Doug Brackman. There Doctor. You. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. There's also a really, 
really good book r- real fast it, uh, by Pat Lencioni called The Six Types of Working Genius. Have you read it? I've definitely read a few different Patrick Lencioni books, but say that again. The title. So it's called it's called The Six Types of Working Genius. Oh, and so okay. I'm going to have to pick that one up. Yeah. I've done the five dysfunctions of a team and oh, the advantage and, you know, the all of those. But yeah, you'll love it then. Ooh. And he Ooh. talks about the acronym is called Widget. Uh-huh. And everybody has two strengths and two weaknesses and then two that's kind of in the middle. Okay. So you have wonder that's, um, that's people that are just curious about the world. Yeah. Um, then you have invention people that are always coming up with ideas, like 30 ideas a minute. Then you have discernment and people that are super good at, at gut instinct and discerning whether or not something's mm-hmm. probably a good idea or probably not a good idea. Then you have galvanizers that are people that are motivating. Mm-hmm. Once you have the idea, let's get everybody on, on board. Mm-hmm. Enablement are the people that, um, our support staff. They don't necessarily need the spotlight, but they want to help. Mm. And then tenacity are the people that need to see a project get finished. Right. And so when you, we started adopting that in our workplace and and really I, I had to apologize to my sister, who's my project manager, because she's high on discernment. Mm. And I always thought that she was just poo-pooing, poo-pooing on my ideas, but yeah. she wasn't, she was just challenging them and, and, you know, and making me make sure that this was a good idea mm-hmm. and, and putting that filter on there. So it was a really good book, but all that to say, if, if you're, if you're a visionary and you're one of those people that like can come up with ideas and you feel like, Oh man, I just start ideas and I never finish them. It's probably because that's not your strength and you probably mm-hmm. need to surround yourself with a, ten- a tenacity person mm-hmm. that believes in your ideas and that can see them all the way through. The way so through. Yep. don't, 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 uh, don't give up hope. It is definitely good to have the yin and yang in the relationship or the partnership or the business because my husband and I are like that. I'm 100% the visionary ideation, top strength, right? And he is very much on the other side of the spectrum. And so it helps balance us out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that's good with your sister that you have that in the business because otherwise we just run wild with all of our ideas all the time. And then maybe things would maybe get finished. (laughs) It would be a nightmare. I feel like this is my theory on it. I feel like when visionaries have an idea because they're visionaries, they see the the entire idea from like birth to like how it's working to like it's death. So they, they, in their mind, they've already experienced the idea. So them wanting to, they may not have the need to like see it all the way through. Right. Cause maybe mm-hmm. they've already envisioned it. Anyway, that's my theory on it. Yeah, no, we recently, with the last couple of years, adopted the EOS, Entrepreneur Operating System. Yeah. And we have our same page meeting and we have basically a parking lot full of Ray's ideas <laughs> because I come up with so many all the time that yeah. if we were to to implement all of them, we would just completely overwhelm, right? And and no one would get anything done because we're just, you know, so we, we have to do that in order to make sure that we pick out the ideas that we want to prioritize and we make rocks and, you know, do everything in 90 days. And Jennifer DeRoyne is our implementer. I should give her a little plug because she's one who helped us set all this up. But it's, it's fascinating to be able to have the ability to, to at least have a space and place to come up with them and know that maybe eventually things will get implemented. Cause I I can imagine a lot of visionaries just want things done very quickly because their brain thinks so quickly, but then everybody else has to sort of appreciate and process and understand and ah yeah yeah Yeah. I I really you know we we have those uh I've you know I also run on EOS so we you know we've definitely slowed down and um there's a book it's called build a second brain Uh and I've taken that to like sort of purge and marry concepts that way, like things are, are living sort of in just one spot. Like you're, you were talking about the, the, the Ray Allen uh, parking lot, like yeah. all of my ideas are now super categorized. And then I'm like, just focused on that. But if I have an idea, sometimes they're like ideas to that, that are part of another idea mm-hmm. or, or to make an idea better. But now that I have those things in place, I can go, ah, this is, this is a whole new project. So that's going to go into the projects folder or mm-hmm. this idea is just, um, part of this idea. So let's, let's put it in there. And that's just a, a way to, you know, make that idea just a little bit better. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's good to be oh, organized. Good. 
yeah, it's definitely trying to organize the thoughts and, and contain yourself and, you know, think it through. And <laughs> it's good for visionaries to go through that process because yeah, it, it could, I mean, after doing this for 20 years, it's like, why didn't I think of that early on in the business? <laughs> I know. Wouldn't that be Mine's great? Like 2020, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so tell me about, we, we talked a little bit more kind of your pivoting and in, in going into the future. How many staff do you have now? And what are you hoping, where do you want to be like in the next, I don't know, two to five years? So I think we have 20 on staff right now. Um, all virtual, except for a couple of people that are here in the studio here in New Orleans, but because we travel around so much, it's not really yeah. necessary for us to have like a, a, a big office or whether people have to be here. Mm -hmm. Um, I see us growing into a, a this personal branding agency mm -hmm. that helps from I'm writing a book later on this year. Uh, oh. It's called Scale for Speed. Mm. And it's basically all of the things that I've put together. I'm smiling because of how I'm going to tell the story. Yeah. But uh, the Scale for Speed model is, you know, okay, what is your one thing? The customer, what is your customer journey? Because we got to map that out completely first. Mm -hmm. And not just map out the customer journey, but map out who's responsible to implement those strategies once you plan that out, right? And that's with mm -hmm. video, that's with triggers. Uh, we use Go High Level for that, right? Mm -hmm. Then podcasting, then organic social media, book writing, press releases, public speaking, podcast guesting, all of this thing. But yeah. um, so that's the book. And that's where I, I think we're moving, going to move into a personal brand and growth agency. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can take people through that like entire process yeah. in phases, but we, so how I'm going to tell this story is basically this guy, mm -hmm. um, is struggling. He's about to close the doors to his business. He wanted to, you know, he's, he thought entrepreneurship was the answer. He just, there's always working. some guy, there's just some guy, yeah, it's just some guy or girl. <laughs> um, and so he's struggling. He's on the phone with his friend. And, and, and he's like, his friend's like, don't make any rash decisions. I know you're going to go to Puerto Rico on vacation. Just enjoy yourself. Come back. And then when you want to make those decisions, then, you know, make those decisions. And he's like, all right, fine. And so he goes to Puerto Rico and uh, he gets drunk on the beach and uh, <laughs> is walking along by himself, feeling sorry for himself. Trips, falls mm -hmm. on a coconut, bangs his head. When he wakes up, he sees this leprechaun who is retired, is a retired leprechaun and living in Puerto Rico. Um, and he, you know, he's like, what's going on? And so he, he has starts having a conversation with the leprechaun about where he was and his business and the leprechauns. Well, let me, you know, let me introduce you to some friends of mine that, that might be able to help you. And so now he, he introduces them to, to a whole bunch of mythical creatures, the, uh, uh, a dragon that's on, that's retired in Puerto Rico, a mermaid <laughs> that's retired, you know, a chupacabra, like all these different, uh, animals, mythical creatures, but each each creature has a uh, lesson for him and you know how he can take all of the concepts and, and grow his business. And so he wakes up, thinks it's a dream, but anyway, goes home and starts implementing the processes. And so that's, that's how I want to tell the book the, or oh, tell yeah. the story. You're going to tell the story. I love it with making mythical creatures and coconuts and <laughs> yes. <that's fun. laughs> yeah. well, I can't wait to read it. That'll be a cool book to go through in that process. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. So what kind of resources would you like to share? Maybe some things that you tap into podcasts that you listen to, or I don't know, things that you subscribe to that other people should know about. I read books like crazy. I try to read a book a week. Nice. Um, so I get a lot of my information from, from books. Uh, mm -hmm. so Pat Lencioni, six types of working genius is amazing. Um, shine, uh, Gino, Gino Wickman's new book on, mm -hmm. you know, just shedding the, the things that are going on in your life and, you know, going through the entrepreneur journey in a, in a manner where when you reach the peak, you, it, it's not empty. Cause I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, when they're on this entrepreneurial journey, they might get to where they want to be and it takes them 20, 30 years. 
But what they realize in, in that 20, 30 years is that it's they had to sacrifice family. They had to sacrifice time. They had to sacrifice a bunch of things mm-hmm. that um, that don't necessarily need to be sacrificed um, just because we're chasing an illusion, really, mm-hmm. right? And and uh, Gap in the Gain is also a really good book by Dan Sullivan mm-hmm. talking about how people are, are too concerned with 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 where they are or, or where they want to be and that's the gap mm-hmm. instead of what what they've gained and that's living in in gratitude and living oh look at where I'm at right mm-hmm. and, and if I'm always living in that way then I'm always living in a way where I'm 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 glad to be here <laughs> you know Feeling and I'm living the bonus life as to you know not <laughs> opposite mm-hmm. yeah so um that's a that that's a really good 10x is easier than 2x by Dan Sullivan is also mm-hmm. an amazing book yeah um, Joey Coleman's um, How to Never Lose a Customer Again. Ooh, that book right there was the, that was the book that sort of changed my business because I think we lost uh, 35, 45, 30, 35 to 40 thousand dollars a month in retainer based business, mm-hmm. uh, like overnight, and we were losing clients, and we were like, "What's going on?" and what, "What's happening?" and they were like, "Armando, you do good videos, but you are." kind of all over the place. You're, 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 we don't know what's happening. We don't know what we're paying for. We don't know this. We don't know that. Yeah. And so that's when I really like sat and, and, and created a customer journey that was like mapped out from, you know, he talks about the assess phase to the admit phase to the, the activate phase and all of that. Yeah. And that really changed the game for us. Cause now when we're connecting with our clients, we're connecting them with them in a meaningful way. It's all intentional we're bringing them through the journey. They're edu- they're educated throughout the process. And so invoices are being paid, you know, the things get, if there's any misunderstandings, they get uh, handled right then and there that resentment doesn't build up because we're not talking to them, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was a really good book. Um, I really think people should, should, uh, should read that. Yeah, no, that's a great list of good reading or listening. I always do audiobooks just cause I'm sure. driving and doing, you know, back and forth, but I almost said book on tape. I can't say that. That's going to show my age. <laughs> book on tape. I've been there. Um, what advice would you give to somebody looking to pursue a similar career as you? I mean, I know you've had kind of different pivots and, and things like that, but I know I have students who subscribe to the show. So I always love to give them a little nugget of wisdom from my guests. But what would you tell somebody who's about to graduate and get out in the real world. <laughs> um, so AI is becoming more and more prevalent, right, in our society. And that scares a lot of people. But what it will not replace is human connection. Yeah. And so if you think about how you can connect and, and, and business is about relationships, and if you keep that in mind, um, you'll be successful. Right. If you, if, and, and marketing is always going to be a thing that people need. They're, they're going to need to amplify their voice. They're going to need to amplify their message for their business. So if you're getting into marketing, good for you. Um, there will always be room. Uh, I, I think you should always be on the cutting edge and be, you know, pay attention to what's trending and what's coming so that you're not caught off guard because think what's true today is not true tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And so we try to stay, we try to stay, um, ahead of trends by going to conferences and things like that. So continuing education is good, but mm-hmm. I think marketing is a great space. Um, I've really enjoyed it. It's a way to be creative. It's a way to make money. It's a way to connect. Yeah. And so if you can make that the forefront of what you think about, like creating relationships and, and how does that play into how you deliver and care about delivering a, a, a product, Mm -hmm. Um, you're always going to be in a, in a better spot. You said you mentioned you went to conferences. What are some top conferences that you would recommend people have to attend? So social media marketing world is great. Mm. Um, they've got some amazing speakers. It goes on February of every year in San Diego. Um, I go to a lot of law conferences because I work with a lot of attorneys. Right. So the eight figure mastermind and Pilma. So I would, you know, if you're getting into marketing and you're, I I would say niche down. So figure out who you want to work with and then attend those conferences. So if it's 
accountants, attend accountants conferences. If it's attorneys, attend attorney conferences. And so I go to, um, I try to make 12 conferences a year and, um, you know, and then networking groups. So I'm a part of the visionary forum. That's uh, visionaries from across the country. We meet up twice, uh, twice a month online, and then we meet up twice a year in person. Um, I'm a member of the eight figure mastermind group and, um, and looking to, to join some more. So networking is, is definitely good. Yeah. So do you have to be an eight figure business to join the eight figure mastermind group? Or are you aspiring to be there? So you, yeah, you don't, you, you, you don't have to be at eight figures. It's also a, a, a group of, of attorneys. I'm, I'm like the only non-attorney in there. Actually, there's an accountant in there. Um, but, um, but yeah, you don't have to be an eight figure business, but that's what everybody's sort of striving to be. Yeah. In that okay. Group. That makes sense. That's awesome. So along those lines though, do you, when you go to the conferences, do you, do you have a booth? Do you speak? Do you just go to attend? Like give some ideas of things that you do when you are attending a conference. I set up a podcast area. Mm. Um, so I always have, you know, if I, if I rent a room, um, that way I can like have, if I connect with somebody on the floor, mm -hmm. um, then we can have a conversation and I bring them in and say, let's, you know, let's, let's do a 15 minute podcast yeah. and, and we can talk about you. So that's a really easy way to connect with people. Mm -hmm. Um, digital business cards, obviously, uh, if you can speak and you have the money to pay to play, a lot of those, mm -hmm. a lot of those conferences are pay to play. If you mm -hmm. have the money, mm -hmm. I would recommend speaking because now you can, you know, the fact that you're on the playbill, <laughs> you right? know, you're, yeah. you're, you know, it's, it's that authority, credibility and trust. And it really is about, um, creating, yeah, yeah. You get paid to speak and then you well, get paid to speak. Better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's even better. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you're in that, in that period of time where you haven't, you, you don't have enough, I guess, credits in We're the speaking realm. We're not Brown here, right? <laughs> right. Right. So if you're not in that, in that space and you're wanting to build that uh, speaker business, I think creating content is, is definitely number one so that you can start getting confident on the speaking topics, okay. create a speaker one sheet, start promoting yourself to other podcasts. Mm -hmm. That way, um, that way people can, when, when they start looking you up online, SEO wise, if people look up my name, the first videos that they're going to see are the videos where I've been on other people's podcasts, not even my own podcast, right. because it's, you know, Google's going to, going to give more power and, and, uh, pushed mm -hmm. videos where other people are talking about you, not necessarily you talking about yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's an easier way to kind of build up that credibility and social currency. Word of mouth accelerator, right? I mean, 100%. you don't have to talk about yourself when other people are doing it for you. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good tip so, there. so those are, those are things that I would start with, you know, and then if you're wanting to get speaking engagements, um, set one up in your city and maybe you can do it with a few others. That way everybody can kind of go in on the money. Right. Hire a videographer and now you have like a speaking reel. Yeah. yeah. And then that, that, that's a way you can, um, you can start pitching yourself too. Yeah. In our area, we do a lot of those like book trailer videos or yeah, speaker demo reels. And it helps because then people can see when they want to book you to speak. And then they have an example of what it is that you've done. And those are really yeah. powerful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Armando, how can people reach out to you in ways that mean something to you? <laughs> uh, um, I'm very easy to find. So if you want, if you prefer Instagram, then you can DM, DM me on Instagram. If you prefer LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, I'm, I'm, it's Armando LaDuke. Uh, LaDuke Entertainment is the name of the company right now. Like I said, mm -hmm. we're in a rebrand phase where, where it will be uh, the LaDuke ag Agency. Mm -hmm. So we have both uh, the LaDukeAgency.com and LaDukeAgency.com. Nice. But um, yeah, just reach out if you just want to have a conversation about where you are and, and you just want to ask questions about, um, you know, a, a direction. We can definitely get on a call and talk about that too. It's That's free you know? Yeah. Um, and I prefer it. Mm -hmm. And you have a podcast too, right? Yeah. It's called spaghetti on the wall. 
Spaghetti on the wall. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely a marketing term that has been used. <laughs> you know, throw spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's also yeah. like kind of my life in terms. I've had, I think I've had 70 jobs in my life because wow. I never, you know, I was just kind of always wanted to run my own business. Mm -hmm. And I sang, I was a singer in a band. I had a ballroom studio. I acted as a bartender. I did sales. So, um, so that was sort of my life, just the spaghetti on the wall yeah. kind of thing and nurtured what stuck. Yeah, I love it. Okay, last piece of wisdom that you'd like to share with our audience. What would you like to summarize and say? You are enough. You are worth it. Your perspective matters. Your story matters. Uh, and get out of your own way. I love that. Thank you so much, Armando, for coming on the show today. Thank you. Yeah. It was fun. Absolutely. And for those of you listening, I know that you need to share this with others that you know that needed to hear what Armando had to say. It was so powerful. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. And then the best thing that you can do for the both of us is not only share it, but also give us a review because podcast reviews are like gold and it helps us get it out there for others to hear, just like we were talking about earlier, so that we can have impact on the world that needs to hear what this podcast is all about yep, and helping yep. you build your brand and your bottom line. Until next time, everybody, enjoy your marketing journey. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. Want to continue the journey? Don't miss out on new episodes. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in our online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com to find out more.